This tutorial series is brought to you by Polygon. Make better renders faster. Welcome back. We have sprinkles, but they are, well, they look more like Tic Tacs. Um, they're all the same color. And what's the fun of sprinkles if they're not different colors? So let's change the color. So the color of the sprinkle is defined by uh, the material of the single sprinkle that it is referencing. So that is the um, yeah, object mode. Yeah, yeah, this little guy right here. So if we went, you know, to the material panel and then we added a new material and, you know, looking at our donut here, you can see if we made these blue, then, hey, look at that, we have blue sprinkles, but that's not gonna help us because they're all the same color. Now, you know, we could duplicate this and make like a whole bunch of different ones with different colors. And that was actually the way I did the first tutorial three years ago, because I actually thought, um, that, that was easier for people to follow. But the best way to actually create a um, randomized color set on your sprinkles like this is uh, to actually do something with the material nodes and get a little bit fancy. So let's, uh, at the top here, along the top bar, you've got an option which we haven't clicked on yet called shading. Okay, so shading mode is, uh, I mean, by the way, these modes, they're just like screen layouts, like these layouts. And then it'll put you into a specific type of like, this is just the 3D view, but it's put you into look dev mode um, up here. But you could go into like, you know, rendered mode, etc. And then this thing down here, this is nodes, the node viewer for materials, right? So this is, you could find that in shader, editor, and then you've got object, etc. cetera. Um, anyway, make sure you've got the, uh, the sprinkle selected the one that is blue, right? And uh, what we want to do is we want to add in a control which will make it so that, yeah, this color here, this blue color is randomized um, depending on which particle it is. So this, uh, by the way, all these settings that you see here, um, the reason they, they might look familiar is that they are the exact same settings that you see over in the right-hand side. This right-hand side, this bar here with, uh, with all the settings, it's just like an easier way to access it. Um, to, to change these settings. But if you need to get advanced, that's when you jump over to the node view, which is where we are right now, which is, yeah, we're gonna do some fancy stuff. So uh, this base color, right? So we could, we could uh, put anything in here. You could put an image texture in here. You could do everything. The one that we're looking for is a node. By the way, I'm hitting shift A and the node under input that I'm looking for is called object info. So I'm gonna drag this in. And we've got a number of uh, values here. So the way nodes work is essentially, if I take like one of these, for example, and I was to put this over here, it would, you know, depending on what this node here actually does, it would take that value. It's, it's like, yeah, it's like mathematics. It's like taking this value and, or programming, referencing this value in another place. If I was to take the random value and I was to put that into the base color, you can see that this happens. All the colors, all the sprinkles are now black and white and various shades in between it. So this object info node, this random output of that is, is basically every time the object is repeated or duplicated or referenced, it's giving it a random value between zero and one, right? Anywhere along there. Um, it could be like one of them is like 0 0.325, 0 0.693, whatever. And depending on where it is along there, it's, uh, by default, it's giving it a white value, or sorry, a black value and a white value. And it's just basically, yeah, it's like a, a gradient between them. So each of these are matching that. Um, and that's well and good if you want <laughs> sprinkles that look like uh, somebody's dead relative's ashes sprinkled on the top. Uh, but what we want is something a little more lively. So what we can do between here, so where it takes the random value and it's zero to one, is we can put in Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp. So if we can drop in this color ramp here and put this in here, nothing will have changed at the moment, um, but what this is doing is it's taken the zero to one and it's now transforming that across this uh, gradient. And this gradient here can be whatever colors or whatever look we actually want. So if I made this black value here and I change this to be orange, you can see that we have this. Um, so as you can guess, the next step is is like, how do you want your sprinkles to look? And then how do you want to set this up? So uh, in my case, I'm going to go with a sort of a pastel themed color scheme. 
and I'm gonna go with like five different sprinkle color sets. So let's go like a blue color like this, and then I'm gonna go a purple color, and then I'm gonna go a hot pink color. And by the way, this is all referencing like um, stuff that I found uh, on the, the, the World Wide Web. Uh, I've got a Pinterest board actually, I'll put the link in the description, but I've, I've found like some uh, like donut sprinkle looks that I like and, uh, and I decided to copy kind of like the, yeah, the color scheme. But anyway, it's basically what I'm doing now. Uh, so let's add another one. I'm gonna make this one yellow and then the last one is gonna be white. Okay, great, so look at that. We now have, looking at our donut, we have those sprinkles. Whoops, oh gosh, what have I done? We have those sprinkles and they all have those colors. Now, one problem, and that is that um, it hasn't just assigned it these colors, it's also assigned it every value in between it. So it's also giving us a value like somewhere between pink and yellow, like some of these sprinkles are gonna be that color. Um, uh, and that's because this is a gradient and there's values in between it. So what we wanna do is we wanna change the gradient type to instead of being linear, we want it to be a constant inter interpolation. <laughs> so if I set that, now you can see that there is only, it's basically now binary, right? It's either on or it's off. It's not a value in between it. And that's perfect. That is exactly what we want. Um, so you can see that it's, the way it works is it's like the uh, every, the distance after the marker in between that and the next marker is that color. So this white value currently has no uh, contribution. So I just gotta move these along a little bit like so, like that. Um, and you can also see very quickly, like you can change the color scheme of your sprinkles. If you want more yellow ones or more hot pink ones or whatever, um, it's just a really, it's an easy way to actually like change the color scheme of the sprinkles. It's a it's kind of cool once you once you set this up. Like I I didn't want to do this for like my tutorial three years ago because I was like ah oh, I don't know like nodes and random settings and color ramp it's too advanced. But then the feedback I got from that tutorial when I did a survey was like everyone's like why didn't you use the random random set with color ramp? And I'm like how did you even know that was a thing? Um, I thought that was too advanced. But anyways, so there we go. We now have different colors. Yay across the whole thing. You'll notice we've only put this into the base color because everything else, like the roughness and all that kind of thing, that's the, gonna be the same. Like those values across sprinkles, they're not gonna change. Um, it's really just the colors of the sprinkles. Uh, speaking of which, by the way, we should probably increase the roughness uh, of the sprinkles so that they're a little bit more more like chalk looking because that's kind of what a lot of sprinkles look like. There's also some that are shiny. So it's really up to you if you wanna go for a shiny sprinkle or a chalkish looking sprinkle. But, uh, but that's, that's gonna do it for that. Um, all right, now let's just jump into the next part of the sprinkles, which is uh, you can see the, the next problem is that they are all the exact same size, right? And obviously sprinkles being sprinkles, no two sprinkles are the same, right? It's, uh, they're all unique, they're all special snowflakes. Some of them are, are a little bit bendy, some of them are like short and fat, and some of them are like, like almost nothing there. So that's what we want to create. Now, as I mentioned, there is, you know, we can't use that uh, scale randomness value. Crap, I just lost it. Oh my gosh. That's what happens when you use a, um, a, a, a a version of Blender, which is experimental. It crashed on me, so that was fun. So let me pause the recording while I redo all that. Yay, okay, so as I was saying, now that I've caught up and redone everything, um, we can't change this scale randomness value. I'm really playing with fire right now, doing the exact same thing that made it crash, because uh, it changes the, uh, the thickness of the sprinkles and that's not good. So really what we really what we want is we wanna have these sprinkles um, that just have like different heights to them, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sprinkle here and I am in layout, edit, object mode, whatever, and I'm gonna duplicate it and this is gonna be another sprinkle. And I'm gonna go into toggle X-ray mode so that I can select the whole thing and I'm gonna make this one twice as long, like so. Okay, now when you do this, you come back to your, your donut over here and nothing has changed. And the reason, some of you probably figured out, it's quite obvious, is that it's still referencing the original object. It's still referencing this single object here. Um, but you can choose to, instead of rendering just a single object, you can reference an entire collection of objects. 
and that is what we're going to do. So I'm going to select my, uh, first of all, let's give this a name. So I'm going to hit F2 and I will call this uh, sprinkle short and I will call this sprinkle long. Okay, and then I'm selecting both of them and I'm going to move it to a brand new collection and we'll call it, what are we going to call it? We're going to call it sprinkles. Whew. Really, uh, really hard to know what's going to happen next. So down here, collections, instance collections, sprinkles. And there we go. So now it's randomly basically pulling from one of those two things. And the cool thing is, is that now we can have as many different types of sprinkles as we want, because there's not just short ones and long ones, but there's also, oh, there's also medium ones. Oh, exciting. Uh, we've got, we got a medium one. Uh, we've also got, uh, we've also got some bendy ones. So let's, oh no, is it going to crash? <laughs> I think it's going to crash. <laughs> it's going to crash. It's crashed. Let's do that again. All right, we're back. Um, yeah, some people would just remove that from the tutorial, the parts where it crashes, but I think it's a valuable lesson. Always save. Um, also, I, I, I will say that um, I'm using an experimental build. It's very rare for Blender to crash this often. Anyways, uh, as I was saying, there are some bendy ones. So I'm gonna duplicate this guy and I am going to, uh, yeah, create like some bendy parts. So I'm just like, oh, I should definitely explain what I just did there, right? <laughs> so control R is gonna allow us to create a loop cut, right? Control R. And, uh, and then when you click, uh, sorry, first of all, you get that like outline, that yellow outline, which shows you where the loop is going to go. And it's basically adding detail, essentially. That's what a, you know, the best form of a loop is. Um, and then if I is scroll wheel, I can increase the number of loops, all right? So this is just like some very basic uh, modeling here. So I just scrolled it up to give me like two loops and then I just click and then it'll ask you where do you wanna place them and if you just right click, it'll just place them right in the default middle area. And then I've got, you know, a bendy, uh, bendy sprinkle looking thing, right? And then uh, I'll do the same thing. I'll duplicate my medium one here as well. I'm gonna sh save as I go, very important. The other thing you can do by the way is just like extrude up and uh, every time you extrude it, it's gonna create one of those loop cuts. It's the exact same way of doing, um, exact same thing. It's just uh, different ways of doing it, essentially. Um, that's actually kind of like a little bit too wormy looking, right? Um, yeah, it's kind of cool. And uh, my, my apologies, but this, this add-on and all the crashes and everything, but sometimes I'm showing you what I'm pushing and other times I'm not, and my apologies, but that's, uh, yeah. We got we got to fix that add-on. It's really bugging me actually. It just turns itself off randomly. Anyways, look at this. We got all these little squiggly worms and stuff all over it. One thing to note as well is like some of them are like really sticking out there, and um, uh, part of the reason for this is that uh, I haven't even got it turned on. But my origin points um, will actually show you here. The, the origin point, that little dot there is the point at which it is attaching itself to the top of the icing there. So that being where it is, it's probably not in the best place. It should probably be in the middle of it. And you can see that all of them have problems with that. So if I right click after selecting all of them and then I select set origin, origin to geometry, it's gonna basically place it in the center of all of those objects. And now when we come back, you should see it's a little bit more improved than it is. Uh, one big problem a lot of people had with the previous tutorial was that um, you've got intersection, right? Um, particles that are intersecting other particles. And unfortunately, there is just no good way to fix that. Um, the particle system in Blender is it's a, little, it's a little old and it just doesn't have this ability yet. You really wanna be able to like read the shape of a mesh and then detect when meshes are intersecting. It should be able to do that, but the current version doesn't do it. I think the plan is for 2.83 or 2.84, something like that. They're gonna roll in particle nodes, which should hopefully have this feature um, and a lot more other things. But for now, really my best advice is if you see things that are intersecting and you're not happy with how it looks, you can change the seed here. The seed is just like a random value. Like every new seed will be a different uh, mix, a different version of it. So I find just find a seed that looks the best. And this will come like, Doing it now is kind of a little bit preemptive because when it comes to rendering, that's really when you want to check like the intersection of things and choose your seed value. But just want to give that a heads up because I know a lot of people have that question of like, ah, how do I fix it? It looks terrible. So anyway, 
Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to add just a few spheres to it because whilst looking at um, all the different sprinkles there, I noticed that uh, it's quite a common trend to have these little balls, like almost like marbles. Like it just looks uh, marbles. Sometimes they're like star-shaped, love, love heart-shaped, just kind of like that, um, I don't know what you call it, like that, like old pastel, like old fashioned candy that's just like all like crushed up kind of thing. Like you could do a lot of really cool stuff with sprinkles. But anyways, I'm just, I just want to add uh, some balls. So, <laughs> funny balls. I am going to, uh, right here inside my sprinkles collection, I'm going to add a new UV sphere. And uh, of course, it's going to be uh, way too big and way too high res. So I want it to be higher res probably than the uh, the sprinkles because it's going to be a little bit bigger, but not too high res. So something like that. And then I'll turn down the size to be, say, five millimeters. No, too big. Let's go three. Something like that. That's uh, actually no, maybe four. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to right click that and shade smooth so that it is smooth. And it's not using the current material over here, which is good because I actually just want to make it one single color. So very simple, new material. And the color is just going to be like a blue, like a saturated, a little bit more saturated aqua color. And it's actually quite shiny. Like the, the roughness would be quite low on this. So, and I think the reason that this has become popular in um, decorating and everything is the same reason that, um, <laughs> we'll get to this. It's the same reason that, uh, like, it, it's just, it's actually art aesthetic, uh, art aesthetic. It's like, uh, there's a technique, which I'm still trying to learn myself, but it's like, you don't want to have just like repetitive uniform detail everywhere because it just looks predictable and it just looks flat and boring and dull. If you can have like big elements, medium sized elements, and then small elements that are placed in like kind of chaotic areas, it can look more interesting. So I believe that's the purpose of having this on cakes and it works, but not right now. It looks like it's been invaded by some, I don't know, nanoparticles or something. So the problem is that it is applying, it's picking from our sprinkles collection here. It's picking them evenly, right? It's just plucking them from this collection and they all have the same kind of relative um, importance or priority. But there is a setting here called use count. And if you enable this in the dropdown, you will see that you get a count value next to each of your sprinkle names. Now there's no way to say like reduce the importance of this, but you can increase the importance of everything else. So essentially for everything other than the sphere, I want to increase the amounts of them. So for the, uh, let's say like medium sprinkles, I'll go 60, um, 60, the long ones, you can also like tweak it. Cause now like there's probably like longer strand, longer sprinkles are probably uh, less common than the medium ones. Same with the short ones. Like that would be less common than the medium ones as well. Most of them would be medium. Um, and then some of these long ones as well. And then finally, just the sphere. You can see that we've now got like just three spheres left because of the importance of them being uh, so small. And that's basically it. Let's just cycle through this a little bit. Whoop, oh, another segments seed here. Every time you do a new seed, like you might get like three or four or something like that appear on it. In fact, I might actually just increase these. I think the spheres are just a little bit too underplayed right now. Go two spheres. Ah, now I've gone too much. I don't know. You, you can play with this yourself and just, as I said, you know, make the, make the sprinkles that you want to see. Be the sprinkles that you want to see in the world. <laughs> um, all right, let's bring back the environment. Let's just see how that looks. There you go, guys. That's the sprinkles. Um, the amount of sprinkles, that's probably the other really big one is the number on top there. Um, and there's no right and wrong answer. It's really like some some donuts have like a few sprinkles and they're like uh, like really big and like chunky, right? Well, not that chunky, but not like slugs. But uh, th that's one aesthetic. Or you can go like the other direction and go like loads of sprinkles and then maybe make them a little bit smaller or something like that. Not that small. <laughs> you gotta You gotta find the right value. But play with it and just, you know, this is where you can get to be creative and artistic and find a look that, that you like and choose the colors you like and all that kind of thing. It's, it's a lot of fun. So 
Go ahead and join me in the next video because we have finished the sprinkles. So join me there.